So we've got in here a centrifugal compressor, an axial flow turbine, and a vaporizing combustor. Uh, this one is mildly different to that. That one starts on gas. In order to get the temperature up in the combustor, that one starts on gas. This one is all kerosene, but what happens is the kerosene is first of all put through a pilot burner, which heats up the combustion system and once the combustion system is up to vaporizing temperature then the main burners are switched on it is very very quiet to start up and as the main burners come in it will actually pick up with energy once the temperature goes up high enough that little starter essentially a candle more or less the, the, the starter uh, burner will turn off and it'll be running completely on its main burner so all the time this has to get up to uh, its idle speed as we had on that one the idle speed was 35,000 rpm the smaller you get the faster things have to move because what we're trying to do is achieve approximately the speed of sound at the tip of the wheels so as you can imagine the smaller you go the faster it has to turn in order to hit those dynamics uh, this engine idles uh, at 60,000 RPM. So once it's up to 60,000 RPM, authority is given to us to be able to actually uh, go through the throttle. Throttle range, uh, max power on this uh, is achieved at just shy of quarter of a million RPM. That then is powering through, all we've got is a, a gas uh, moving through. If you can imagine a you know, big wind turbine on a hilltop, if you can imagine basically what's called the free power turbine in here which is connected to the gearbox and the fan at the back. Uh, so what I've got is a lot easier to explain to you. This is another thing of the same but it's I can actually dismantle it. So that's the front bit and as you can see there is actually no mechanical connection between that bit and that bit. In this particular case, it's actually turning a generator. So this is a turbo generator, uh, as opposed to this, which is a turbo fan. The same thing happens with the turbo prop, uh, or we can use it for a helicopter to turn the rotors. So no physical, so what we've got essentially is a fluid clutch. So the gas is passed through here, very fast out of here, and it starts to turn, this is our windmill in a hurricane and it actually starts to turn that, and you can actually see it turning that generator at the back, hopefully, yeah? So that's what, what we're doing here. So you'll see when it starts, the you'll hear the engine start, but those who are in line with the fan, you'll see the fan doesn't move at all. It's just static. Eventually, enough pressure builds up in that center section there that you'll suddenly start seeing the, the, the fan spin up. Once this reaches idle speed, we've got 60,000 RPM here. The fan will be running at about 3,000, 3,500 RPM, producing about you know, 0.3 of a kilogram of, of thrust. So that's our idle thrust. We'll then go through that throttle range, you know, sort of take it up you know, in, in the top. We won't go to the very top, otherwise you will be blown away. <laughs> this will produce 10 kilograms of thrust at full power. So it's actually a very powerful little machine. Uh, there's not much to be seen, so we actually have this little streamer, and you'll get the idea of it. It's uh, the gases, or they are obviously cold air, because it's just coming cold air in, cold air out. There is the exhaust from the engine here, so it will feel warm behind. It won't feel hot, but it will feel warm, uh, and you will obviously get that. Yeah, lovely smell that you get at the airport of that, you know, sort of that burn kerosene smell. So, you know, if, it, if you're into perfumes, that's, that's the one to get. <laughs> but anyway, what we'll do, we'll get this thing fired up and demonstrate how you'll notice, as I say, anyone who watched this one earlier, you notice how noisy it was because actually all the gases are coming out very fast and it's actually shearing the air around about and it creates a huge amount of noise because of the high velocity of the gases. Because we're keeping all that energy inside the machine and 
converting it into shaft power, you'll see how much quieter this is. For those who saw the earlier one, so there's a big, big comparison to be seen. Uh, Mike, you're on. That's all it does. <laughs> so a lot of the a lot of the noise you heard actually was the fan and the gearbox. It's just the speed of the fan moving, taking the air through, and the sound of the gearbox reducing those high uh, high RPMs down to the, the fan speed. Um, but otherwise, you know, so the actual noise of the jet engine was very minor by comparison to the actual noise from the uh, from the from the fan. So we're hoping to uh, on our next run, we're going to try and get the turbo prop running. So a very very similar concept, um, and the, uh, the the prop actually is a lot quieter still. But so someone asked earlier, you asked about the bearings, okay? The bearings. Um, are uh, basically standard steel races, inner and outer. The balls are ceramic and there are no cages. So they're what's called full complement angular contact hybrid ball races, which is a bit of a mouthful, but it, it is perfect for this kind of uh, arrangement because if you think about the angular contact, we only need two bearings, one at the front, one at the back. And so they're dealing with both the radial as well as the axial motions, and it keeps the rotor centrally positioned in the engine. And we're often asked, why don't we use air bearings? Well, yes, it's possible, but you're actually adding all sorts of complications, one of which is the fact that air bearings have to be parallel on the shaft, which means you've got no axial control which means you have to have a third bearing in there to actually then control the axle motion. Uh, and so actually, whilst the air bearing sounds like a nice idea, it's a lot more complicated 
than what we've got with two single angular contact bearings. Are you saying you don't have a cage? No cage. Um, Keep the balls from catching up on one another. Yeah, well, that's partly why they're angular contact, is because actually when they're assembled, one shoulder is missing, so they actually have to be held in contact with the, the races. So we have a, 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 a preload spring in there to hold them. Um, and oddly enough, the air dynamics through the bearing um, by the time they reach about 3,000 RPM, there's enough air passing through them that an air cushion actually develops between each ball. And so they're completely separate and running freely. Uh, we lubricate uh, by adding a tiny, tiny amount of uh, lubricant to the fuel. So we're actually running two stroke. So we take that uh, fuel, it goes through the fuel pump into a T the tea comes off through a restrictor so a tiny tiny quantity goes down and actually is put between the compressor back and the front in front of the front bearing in the tiny gap there at these kinds of speeds as that uh, those drips of uh, fuel oil hit the uh, shaft they instantly atomize we also bleed off some of the air create an oily mist and it just passes through the tunnel and burns off on the way out through the back. Uh, but by adding fuel and oil through air, you get vaporization during its passage through the bearings. And as you know, when you, whether it be water, kerosene or whatever, it tries to grab heat from its environment. In this particular case, it's taking heat from the bearings in order to uh, finish its vaporization and, and head out. And so the temperature of the bearings in this one um, are within about 200 degrees, so a drop of somewhere around 600 degrees across two millimeters. And the bearings are actually designed for 300 degrees, so we're sort of kind of working within the limits of the bearings. The rotors uh, need to be balanced actually quite finely. We actually try to aim for a balanced level similar to a gyroscope. So 0 0.05 of a gram per centimeter, better than. <laughs> um, but it's actually not that difficult to achieve. And once you've done it a couple of times, actually it becomes fairly straightforward. <laughs> <laughs> once you've been shown once, you can normally do it. <laughs> Certainly that one there normally gets a new set of bearings about every 50 running hours. And they can last longer. One of the difficulties, especially to show like this, because we're on the ground, there's actually quite a lot of contaminant in the air, especially with all the steam engines around, the stuff that comes. And they're very kind. It's all organized that they stay away from us when we're running. Um, I had a, a situation some years ago where uh, at a different exhibition, we had uh, a traction engine, a full-size traction engine came past and there was just a slight ramp where he, just where we were running and I saw him open the throttle and this plume of black smoke came out. I was at full throttle and I saw my bearing temperatures go up 20 degrees instantly. So I shut down and the whole of the inside of the shroud where the compressor was running was black and then each vein had a, a black, you know, black tip where all that should have just been, because it's, it's taking in about five cubic feet of air per second.